I'm going to, so yeah, I'm going to talk about uh, Quill today and narrative science. Uh, and uh, I, my expectation is that uh, you've seen a set of presentations, and every single one of those presentations had numbers and charts and graphs. Um, uh, and, uh, and you like numbers and charts and graphs, uh, and, uh, because you live in a world of numbers and charts and graphs. Uh, and what narrative science uh, does is get rid of those. Um, and we get rid of those uh, by doing uh, one thing and one thing only. And that is our system, Quill, uh, takes structured data, that is numbers and symbols, uh, takes structured data, mines that data for meaning and insight, and then transforms that data into natural language, that is English. That is English reports that actually explain what the data describes, because the data is there to describe something. It explains what the descri data describes in a way that any human being can understand. Um, and so rather than having numbers that you use to calculate, we're able to calculate to figure things out, graphs where you have to interpret things to figure things out, uh, you have English, where all you have to do is read. And the English is absolutely indistinguishable from language that a regular human being would write. Uh, in your world, uh, we, have a few, um, uh, we have a few products. Um, uh, we have products ranging from um, uh, uh, reporting across uh, portfolios, that is for wealth management, actually uh, creating reports for, uh, for managers, reports for uh, clients, um, and in fact little snapshots for clients where they can see at any given moment how their portfolio is doing. Um, we also do a fair amount of work on the compliance side, and that is fraud detection, um, where we can take a look at a massive set of transactional data pull it down into, uh, into a uh, characterization of what's going on with regard to that data, and provide not only alerts, but explanations as to why those alerts are there. Um, and um, uh, operational um, performance reviews. That is, taking a look at all your branches and being able to have real reports, genuine language around how everybody's doing. So let me show you what that means. Uh, in the, private wealth, uh, in the private wealth communications realm, uh, we start out with data. That is, what, do, what constitutes a portfolio? And it's data that you would expect. It's like people, someone's holdings, uh, the state of the market uh, at any given time. We can take that and turn it into this, an actual uh, explanation of what's going on that a portfolio manager can look at right before they have their call. And so they can actually be in a position they can actually be in a position where when they're talking to someone, they know exactly what's going on with their portfolio, not because they've dug deep into it, but because a machine has dug deep into it and has reporting it to them directly. And so they have the talking points in their hands so they can communicate directly with a client and sound like the smartest analyst in the organization. Because in fact, the analysis was done based upon the best thinking of the smartest analyst in the organization, but done by the machine and done at scale. Of course, it's often the case uh, that an individual doesn't have time, or even a manager doesn't have time, to have a personal communication, a one-on-one -on -one conversation uh, with, uh, with a client. If you have enough clients, uh, and I expect you all want to have enough clients, uh, if you have enough clients, uh, then in fact, having those one-on-one -on -one conversations are impossible. But you still want to have one-on-one -on -one communication. One-on-one -on -one communication where you can talk about how somebody's doing both in terms of the top line, how they're doing compared to the market, how they're doing compared to the goals, their goals, how they're com doing compared to benchmarks, and in terms of the individual drivers based upon the decisions of their manager and how those actually impacted their portfolio. Uh, of course, you might not want to have all of this at once, and so you could just have a snapshot. And the snapshot just gives you visualizations that show you exactly what's going on at this moment in time and the best talking points internally uh, for what's going on. That is an understanding of what I should care about right in this moment about what's going on in my portfolio. All of this is generated by a machine. A machine that has been trained to understand portfolio analysis and as a result is able to look at the data figure out what's going on, figure out what's interesting, figure out what's important, and then translate it, transform it into language that anyone can understand. 
And in fact, the language itself is aimed at the different audiences that are going to read it. The language for a manager is going to be the language of talking points and technical. The language for a particular client might in fact be more colloquial, more straightforward, more top line, as opposed to all of the details of what's going on. Um, and in fact, probably is going to focus on the positive aspects of what's going on in their portfolio, as well as how well they're tracking against their personal goals. Now, we can actually do this kind of with any data at all. And when I say kind of, I mean with any data at all. So you can just get rid of kind of. Uh, 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 any data set that has a story in it, we can configure our system to, re to figure out that story, to go into that data, mine that data, figure out that story, and tell that story. But what we're doing now is we're not looking at that, we're not looking at what we're doing in terms of the platform, but in terms of particular products for particular sectors, financial services being a primary one. And one of the places where we found there is a tremendous amount of interest is in fraud detection. Um, and so this, again, is transactional da data. Reams after reams after reams of data, um, which can be actually translated into two things. Uh, by the system taking a look at what's going on with the day at the data level and looking for particular patterns of activity, it can actually create alerts. And that is, in real time, actually present you with alerts that explain why it is telling you something, wrong, something is going wrong. But an alert, um, while it's necessary in real time, sometimes is not as powerful as having a full explanation. And since the system itself has access to all the rules it's using to figure things out, all the reasoning it has done to figure things out, it's able to communicate to you what that reasoning is. It's able to explain to you exactly what it was thinking as it presented you with this uh, information. And so we can talk to you about the kinds of things that it's found, why it finds them to be untoward, and then allow you to make any further judgments and assessment. This can go all the way up the chain, that is from alerts to internal uh, documents, all the way to the documents that have to be created for compliance purposes uh, that, are shared with the, uh, that are shared with the government. Um, every single stage of it can be done by the machine and actually allow the people who are doing it now to actually start working in places where they're working at the best of their game. That is, going through uh, transactional data and figuring out what's going on uh, in that transactional data is not nearly as powerful as looking at new ways to find uh, new problems in the world. Um, and so what we do is we have the machine tell the story, we have the machine do the analysis, we have the machine drive the communication to free up your people uh, so they can do work better and you can scale that communication to everyone. Thank you.